kids are at school and they're going to have a future like me. I the job when I was eight years old to keep my mouth from starving. Oh, they were going to get me and make me bend my back into like a little papa, you know. You know what they get out of these places? 30 and 40 pounds to week. You know what that is a year? Name's Charles Clark. Actor. Working part-time in the box office. Is that what this is? Yeah. Dr. Binia? Uh-huh. How was it done? Looks like a head bashed in. I'm done with that doorstop. Blood prints on it. There's blood prints all over the place. On the wall, on the door handle. He's trodden in it and left a trail. That's good of him. Thank amateur. What's missing? 26 quid in notes. Hanging from a hook up in there. From a hook? Yeah, on a bulldog clip. Killer probably tried to snatch it, didn't know Clark was in there, struggled, bashed him, had it away. When? Between quarter to nine and half past. There was a performance going on in there. Oh, a strip? Clip? No, 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 a real performance. It's a theatre, sort of a play with music and dancing. It's a club theatre run by that bloke out there. What's his name? Henry James Buckingham. What did he tell you? Who he was, who this one was. He said he found him like this after the audience had gone home. He was alive during the interval. He was dead when he found him? As a dodo. Anything else? No. Mr. Buckingham. Yes? I'm Chief Superintendent Kingdom. Can I have a word with you? Of course, yes. You knew Mr. Clark? Yes. I got Charlie into this. If it hadn't been for me, the man would... He's got two little kids. How am I going to tell his wife it'll kill her? Yeah, well, it's not going to be pleasant. We'll send an officer around with you. There'll have to be an identification later anyway, and we'll need to see her. Will you answer questions now or later? No, I'll tell you what I know. Are you sure you feel all right? We can wait. It's all right. Get it over with. Right. Come in here, will you? Now, tell me about Mr. Clark. He was an actor, out of work. I promised him a part in the next production. In the meantime, I said he could earn a few quids working in the end of the evening. Oh, the man's dead. It's hard to believe. How many were in the audience tonight? I can tell you exactly. 72. It's on the plan. Full up, full house. All the seats were taken? Yeah. Were you in here during the performance? Yeah, all the time. In the second half? Yeah. So, if anybody had slipped out or not come back after the interval, you'd have noticed? Yeah, nobody left. Now, what about this audience? Do you know any of them? A lot of them. Some of them are friends of mine. They live in the street. Black and white or all black? Both black and white. That's what this is all about, right? That's what what's all about? This place, this street, this district, this killing. Tell me what you mean by that, please. This was a community venture. I spent ten years in this district trying to get people together, black and white together. That's what my play is all about, right? Simple people power. But my play says that white power is finished, but there is always I a don't chance think we to... want to go into politics, Mr. Uh, go on, please. You don't want to go into it. But that is why Charlie was killed. Oh, go on, please, Mr. Buckingham. You said that racial questions had something to do with Mr. Clark's death. But my place says that you don't have to have landlords. You don't have to be out of work. That black and white can work out a new society without murder. And you mean Mr. Clark was killed because of that? We've had stones thrown through the windows, obscene words on the walls, breaking down the door. Tonight we had a visit from a gang of thugs. Tonight? When? Before the interval or after? At the beginning, when the place started, they came in and stamped her on, burst in and out again. <laughs> That's nothing. Letters to the local papers opposing the theatre. Letters threatening to kill me. To kill you? Yes. You have these letters? Yeah, how many do you want? I have quite a few. You 
shown these to the local police? No, I gave them some a long time ago, but they couldn't find out anything. I ask for protection, but what? They gave me normal patrols. And you connect these with Mr. Clark's death? Well, of course, it had to end like this. I want all the letters you've got. You're implying that Mr. Clark was killed because of his colour. I'm more than implying, Sergeant. Uh, get the body off to the mortuary, will you? And then get all that stuff down to the lab. Then we can start the forensic boys working in the box office. Yes. Now, you think that one of these people who burst in earlier came back and killed Mr. Clark? I don't just think. Well, you can't know that. We've been waiting for this for years. Are you going to say the case of somebody just coming in to steal money? Well, that's what it looks like. We'll go into everything, of course. Look, Superintendent, a black man has been killed. Now, if there's any nonsense about this, any covering up, there will be reprisals. Look, there'll be no covering up. You'll leave this to us. There'll be no reprisals either. Now, you will cooperate, I hope. Who, oh, me? This will be completely out of my hands. But you will use your good offices. You're well known out here, obviously. Found in a dustbin in the basement area outside, stuffed right down to the bottom of the bin. Blood. What do you know about these? Oh, those are the pair of... Are the what? Leroy, I give him this pair of overalls to wear. They are mine, but I gave them to him. Leroy? Uh, Leroy Boone, the chap who cleans out, and he looks after the club and all... Oh, no. That's not possible. Where is he? Well, I was looking for him earlier. He just left suddenly. He didn't lock up the club. He Where just... does he live? Oh, come on. Oh, Leroy's not your man. He wouldn't do a thing like What's this. What's his address? Oh, come on, you can't accuse Leroy of doing a thing well, like I'm this. I'm not accusing anyone. I just want to know well, his address. Well, this would be terrible if Leroy did this. What's he... his address? making inquiries into the death of a man at the Third World Theatre Club this evening. Is your name Leroy Boone? You are Leroy Boone. You work as a handyman at the Third World Theatre Club in Sentinel Street. In view of the evidence in my possession, I must ask you to accompany us to the police station. You're within your rights not to give any answers, but I must tell you that anything you might say will be taken down and may be given in evidence. Governor, there's blood on the soap and in the sink, too. Get him down. Right. Come on, you. Come on. Oh, give him a blanket. Give him his trousers. I want a blood sample as well as his dabs. Right, sir. Well, he's hit. Get a team up here, turn the place over. Why did you stop me, if you don't mind me asking? I don't want that man roughed up. Roughed up? He's just killed a man. There was no need for that. He was helpless, scared stiff. Well, we didn't know that. They can go berserk. What do you mean? They can go berserk. Everyone knows that. I don't know that. I don't want Boone interviewed till he's had an opportunity of getting a solicitor, preferably black. What? I'll get on to the community relations officer, fix one up. Why? Because that's the way I want it. Because he's a black man? That's right. That's not our usual procedure. Used to be. It's the procedure in this case. Race doesn't enter into this, you know. Doesn't it? No, it's robbery with violence resulting in murder. Plain as the nose on his face. Now, what are we pussyfooting around for? Look at the scratches on his cheek. The blood on the overalls, the blood on his boots, the blood in the sink. The money's around here somewhere. It'll take the lab two minutes to pin Clark's nail scrapings onto Boom. He's behaving like a stricken ghost. It's him, you said so yourself. What do we want to have a solicitor present for? It takes half an hour to ask one question. It's written in general orders that any prisoner or suspect has the right to ask for the assistance of a solicitor. He hasn't asked. I'm asking for him. Lock the place up, post the man. The doctor will be along in a moment to have a look at those scratches, take a blood sample. What do you want me to do? Well, first, get round to Buckingham. Tell him I'd like to see him here tomorrow. 
And then you'd better get round and see Clark's wife. Right. Now, wait a minute. Trace the writers of all these letters. I want all these jokers here tomorrow as well. Then get on to the uh, local newspapers, get those clippings, the letters opposing the club. Send someone round to find out who wrote them. OK. I haven't finished. Round up every one of those thugs who burst into Buckingham's club tonight. Bring them along, too. Well, where are they going to put them all? There's not room to swing a cat You'll in here. find room for them somewhere. Anything else? Yes. Look, I don't know whether you realise it, but it's my impression that you're showing hostility towards this suspect. Hostility? What do you mean? You're suggesting that I'm colour conscious? What have I done? Your general attitude, the way you jumped him, your talk about uh, them going berserk, your remark about the nose on his face. I don't want any more of it. Look, all That's my... enough. Get him down to a cell, get him ready for the doctor. I want pictures of those scratches. Uh, we'll show you to your room now, Mr. Boone. Yeah, have you ordered breakfast? I believe it's Finn and Haddock. I think they recommend that around here. Come with me, then, please. Uh, Mr. Boone, uh, this is Mr. Daniels. He'll tell you what it's all about. Hello, Mr. Boone. My name is King Daniels. I'm a solicitor. Good morning. Morning, sir. I do sit down. Thank you, Mr. Bates. Now then, Mr. Boone, the position is the community relations officers asked me to be present while you're being questioned. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about it. About the death of Charlie Clark? I don't know nothing about it. I have nothing to do with well, it. Well, you must understand I'm not here to represent your case. We'll talk about that later. I'm here, if you want me to, to protect your rights, to see that what are known as the judge's rules are carried out, to see that they're fair to you. Do you understand? Uh, yes, sir. Well, well, it will be fair. Yes. At the same time, the police have explained to me that there's a great deal of evidence pointing to you. Now, my advi advice to you, for what it is worth, and you don't have to take it, is that you should explain how these things happened, how these items of evidence came to be in the condition they are. Do you understand? That's Pokes. I asked Page to come out. Stay with Boone till I get back. Right. Mr. Perks, will you come this way, please? Sit there, will you? Ah. Did you write that? No, not me, Governor. What about that? No. For that? No. Did you write this? No. None of this is your writing? No. Show me your handwriting, please, Mr Perks. You trying to get me on this murder, are you? I just want to see your handwriting. You can't charge me with that. Oh, come on now. We know it's your writing. Look, it's a page from an old exercise book. It's a letter to your girlfriend. We've compared it. You read all this rubbish, didn't you? Well? Does that mean you did? I suppose I did. I'm not saying I did, but suppose I did run him. Well, what's so important about him? I've never seen him before. To the man what wants to open a black strip club for jungle bunnies. Set one foot in Sentinel Street and you've got your lot coming. Your smelly presence is not wanted. Go home or you're dead ducks. What does that mean? I didn't write that. Go home, you're dead ducks. You've got your lot coming. Come on now, what does it mean? I didn't write it. You know, I'm one of the idiots who's always believed that every villain has one redeeming feature. I think you might well be the very first exception to that rule. You and your sort make me sick. I want a sample of this man's handwriting. Come on, sonny boy, write. Try Jungle Bunny. Son. 
Grab that stuff for now. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Boone. You are Leroy Winston Boone. Is it not procedural to remind Mr. Boone he doesn't have to answer the questions and all that? We did it last night. Mr. Perhaps Daniels. he's forgotten. Uh, Mr. Daniels is quite right. I was just about to do it. Mr. Boone, you're not obliged to say anything at all, but anything you do say may be put into writing and given in evidence. Right? You are Leroy Winston Boone. Yes, sir. Date of birth. 12th of April, 1922. Where, sir? Montego Bay. And where do you live now? 20 Sentinel Street. And you work as a handyman in the Third World Theatre Club in Sentinel Street? Yes, sir. And the time now is 9.13 a.m. Thank you, sir. Mr. Boone, were you in the club last night? Yes, sir. During the performance? Yes, sir. Where were you during the second half of the performance? In the calf, downstairs. Now, we know that between 8.30 and 9.30, Mr. Clark was killed in the box office at the end of the hall on the ground floor. Where were you during that time? In the calf. You didn't go upstairs? No, sir. You didn't go upstairs at all? No, sir. And those overalls. Mr. Boone, are these yours? You were wearing them last night, weren't you? We found them, rolled up, stuffed to the bottom of one of the dustbins in the basement. There's blood on them. How did they get into the dustbin? Whose blood is that? Mr. Boone. These are your boots. You were wearing them last night, weren't you? Traces of blood around the heel there. How did you get those scratches on your face? Why did you bury your overalls in the dustbin and go home early? What have you done with the money? Now tell us, Mr. Boone, why won't you answer? Tell us all about it. Remember what I said, Mr. Boone, you don't have to say anything at the stage. Mr. Daniels. In view of the evidence, there's every likelihood I may have to charge this man with murder when we've completed our inquiries. It's in his own interests to answer. That's what I told him. Come on, Mr. Boone, answer the questions. You speak English, don't you? That is an insult, Sergeant Ward. The kind of menacing innuendo of my compatriots have to put up with in this country. That they're primitive and beneath contempt. There is a reason why Mr. Boone will not answer these questions. Well, perhaps you'll tell us what that is. Mr. Boone, will you tell us? There is a great deal of evidence to be answered here. Will you tell us why you will, you will not answer these questions? I don't want no trouble. I don't want trouble. I bet you don't. Never been in any trouble before. I kept myself out of trouble. I know they would blame something on me. I should not have gone up to her. You went upstairs. I didn't do nothing. I come to this country to work. They tell me, Leroy, keep out of trouble. They tell me, you don't stand a chance once the police get you. All they can see is your black skin. They blame anything on you if you have a black skin. It seems you have your answer, Superintendent. It's not only his problem, but yours as well. Something to do with your image, I believe. Or your record. Twelve pound a week. I pay six pounds to the landlord. Three pounds I send home to my wife and family and three pounds for me. I do that for seven years now and no trouble. And now, here I am. Oh, why did I go up those stairs? Why did you go up the stairs? I saw a man standing up there in the street. What man? A man. Black or white? A white man. Mm. Go on. The first time I come out, he was standing there. Next time, it was coming out of the door. 
and I thought to myself, I ought to see what happened. Why did you think you had to see what had happened? Well, it was looking superstitious. <clears throat> Suspicious, Sergeant. Thank you. What was he doing? I was looking up and down, kind of quick-like. And when he come out the door, he was nervous and took off quick. Go on. I went inside. I opened the door and Charlie grabs me. He's going to hit me with something. So I grabs it. And he falls down. So I runs out. I don't want no trouble. The white man has attacked Charlie, but they will say it's me. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You don't believe me. See what I tell you? I knew that would say it's me. I knew that. Well, calm down, Mr. Boone. If you didn't do it, we'll find out who did. Now, you say you saw this white man. Did you get a good look at him? Yes. What did he look like? He was wearing a light blue hat. Hat you call. Chloe? And a black overcoat. Yeah? Well, what about his face? Can you describe his face? He was white. He had a white face. Now, come on, Mr. Boone. You said you got a good look at him, and all you can say is that he was a white man. What about his features? Highbrow, lowbrow, big nose, small nose, pointed chin. I don't... I know. You can't describe his face. You can only remember that he was white. <laughs> Young or old? No, I... You got a good look at him, you said. It surprises you, Sergeant. Mr. Boone thinks all white men look the same. I've heard that somewhere before. Now, you say that when you went into the box office, Mr. Boone, and Mr. Clark was already injured. Yes. And he tried to hit you? Yes. Why? I don't know, what sir. What did he try to hit you with? I don't know, sir. And you say you panicked and ran off? Yes. With the money? No, sir. I didn't take any money. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can I have a word with you? It's very important. Uh, reports from fingerprints on the lab, sir. The uh, blood prints on the door stop, door handle, and the wall are boons. Mm. Uh, the scrapings fit too. No sign of the banknotes yet. Uh, these are the analyses of the dust particles and the rubbish found on the floor of the box office. Mm. Look, you didn't drag me out just to give me these. Uh, no, sir, no. Something has cropped up. I thought you'd want to know about um, some prints on the window of the box office, on the glass at the other side. They belong to Perks. Uh, Superintendent, can I have a word with you, please? I'm busy just now, Mr. Buckingham. I'll see you later. Perks, eh? Oh. oh, thank you very Look, much. Look, this is serious. I want to speak to you now. All right. Keep our friend company, will you? Yeah, right, sir. Now, what can I do for you? The word has got around that Mr. Boone is going to be charged with murder. Oh, how did that happen? You have kept him here all night. Look, this has nothing to do with you. It's a police investigation. Look, Leroy did not do it. Any fool knows that he's not got it in him to do a thing like this. He keeps himself to himself. He's a simple, honest man. He just will not do it. I'm not going to discuss it with you. Look, Superintendent, if a man is going to be charged because of his Mr. color... Buckingham! I can assure you that nothing of the sort will happen in this case. I shall see to that. That is what they're saying. That's what who's saying? There's a militant black group who will take action. Now, I have influence, but if an innocent black man is accused, I shall not be able to stop them. My work of conciliation finished with Charlie's death last night. Here is where I draw the line, right? Theatres, community, ventures, political action, they will mean nothing now that a man has been killed. Aren't you overstating this? What can you know about this? You have none of our problems. Look, Mr. Buckingham, you have my word that this investigation will be conducted scrupulously without regard to colour, race, or anything other than plain facts. I have no prejudice. That's not my business. If there's any cover-up for these white gangsters here, I shall have to join my friends. You'll then have the pleasure of arresting me. He's finally admitted he wrote the letters. Prepared to make a statement. Well, we knew that anyway. Where'd you get this? It's my labour money. When did you get it? Yesterday afternoon from the labour. You're out of a job. Yes, sir. Last year, you did six months for beating up a black man. You're still under the probation officer for that. That's right. Now, you'll remember that on that occasion, you had your fingerprints taken. Yes, sir. Right, now, will you explain to us how they come to be on the glass petition outside the box office in the Third World Theatre Club? Come on, now, it's a simple question. We found them there. 
You tell us how they got there. It's not true. They're your prince. You were there last night. You came in with a few others at about ten to eight, stamped around a bit and then left. Later, you came back. No. You were there last night. Yeah. You left, then you came back. No. Oh, yes. To nick a few quid and kill a black man. No. How did your fingerprints get on the box office window? Well, I went up to the window when we come in. I must have pressed my hands against it. Yeah, that's right, I pressed my hands against it. I called his bloke some names and I joined the others. We had a bit of fun and then left. You had a bit of fun. You call it fun. That's all, yeah. You call writing that polluted rubbish fun. I didn't kill that you came black back. man, no. Oh, yes, you came back. You're wearing a light blue hat and a black overcoat. You nicked 26 quid and you killed Charles Clark. No. Sergeant, I want to know a great deal more about this man. Lock him up. Uh, oh, I didn't kill him. You've got it wrong. Will you be quiet? I didn't kill him. If you didn't kill him, we'll find out who did, but you did write those letters. Yeah, but right, I didn't... you'll stay with us for a while. Come on. Well, everything in that box office is accounted for, except about 20 different varieties of hairs, old fag ends, the rubbish of three or four weeks, and this. Found under the chair in the box office. Thin card, yellow, faded, worn round the edges. Looks as if it's worn by rubbing in somebody's pocket. Hmm. It's got a date on it. Part of a date. October. Purple date stamp. One of those rubber ones. Date stamps in the box office are black. Yeah. Official form of some sort, I should think. Oh, post office income tax shouldn't be difficult to find out. Get hold of all the P48 and Z69s you can lay your hands on, all the yellow ones. I mean, it may be nothing, but on the other hand... All right. Did you get anything from Perks? No. Oh. Not only did he write these letters, not only has he got form for bashing blacks, but he was one of that group who burst into the place last night, got chased off, his fingerprints on the box office window. Yeah? Yeah. Trace every move he made from the minute he left that club. Turn his drum over for a blue hat and a black overcoat, all his pals and connections, too. Right. Oh, you better get me a selection of Trilby hats, all shapes and sizes, all shades of blue, and a selection of black, dark brown overcoats. Get them here so Boone can have a look at them. Do you think it's Perks? Well, he ties in with this campaign to oppose Buckingham's club. He's the nasty end of it. It's all here in that stuff you dug up last night. Bunch of fascists. Well, that doesn't mean he killed him. He could have done that. It could have been him. Uh oh. It could have been him. Boone could be telling the truth. What, you believe him? No, I didn't say that, but there is an element of doubt. There's boots, prints, scratches, overalls. Everything points to Boone. On the other hand, Forensic went through that room of his with a ferret. There was no money. There's his idiotic behaviour when he found Clark. There's the white man in the blue hat. Now there's Perks's prints on the box office window. Well, they could have been put there weeks ago, couldn't they? Oh, no. He admits they were put there last night. Now we have to find out if he came back. Right. Look, there's something that's been worrying me. Do you mind if I talk to you about it? No, of course not. Sit down. You've accused me of showing prejudice towards this suspect on the grounds of his colour. That's right. I deny that. I've never been slanted against black people. The people who are slanted always make that claim. Do you make that claim? Me? What do you mean? Are you saying that you're not prejudiced? Yes, I am. Do you mind me talking to you like this? No. It has some bearing on the conduct of this case. Yes. Well, you've jumped on me several times. Oh, some unsubtle remark. Yet you've given this suspect special treatment ever since we've picked him up. Kid Gloves, a solicitor. Does that make me prejudiced, doesn't it? Did Perks get a solicitor for his questioning? No. Isn't that prejudice? Because a man is black, he gets a solicitor, even though he hasn't asked for one. Are you suggesting that I'm uh, prejudiced the other way? I'm pro-black? Um, you mean to say that I'm anti-white? No. You said a lot of people who claim they aren't prejudiced really are. I'm saying that there are also people who are prejudiced, but who bend over backwards to prove that they're not. Listen, there are special circumstances in this area. There's an embittered, coloured community, a minority who've suffered years of exploitation and victimisation. Now, it's our job to size up a situation like that and act accordingly. Police work isn't just going by the book, we have to adapt ourselves to certain conditions. Now, if there were to be another killing or a riot, because I'd gone into this case like a cart horse, I'd be to blame. Does that answer your question? 
There are those that could accuse you of giving way to Buckingham's threats of reprisals. I don't care a damn what they accuse me. I want Perks and Boone kept here. And I don't want any statements to the press. Is that all? Yes. Good. This is it. It's the card that's dished out to every unemployed man when he signs on for his money. Wait a minute. Labour money. The date stamps the date when they first sign on. Yeah. Somebody dropped a bit of their labour exchange card on that box office floor. Yeah, well, of course, that could apply to Buckingham, Clark, Perks or Boone. I mean, they've all been out of work at some time or other. Yeah, get Perks in. Yeah, all right. There's no unemployment card here. I mean, the stuff he brought from his place. Didn't miss anything, did you? No. No, no it's not here. Get Perks in. Well, this could be the break. Of course, it could be nothing. But there are three things unaccounted for. A possible light blue hat, maybe with bloodstains on it. £26 notes, ditto. And this. Yeah, well, of course, there needn't even be a blue hat. Yeah, I know. The money might have been destroyed or just spent. Yeah, and that might be untraceable and have nothing to do with it. Yeah. I want every man who signed on at any of the local labour exchanges in uh, October of the last three years. All right. right. Mm -hmm. Start making out a list, Joe. Yep. Oh, and hats. I want a certain hat. You're out of a job. Yes, sir. How long have you been out of a job? For a long time, sir. How long? For nearly a year. There haven't been any jobs. When? I mean, when did you first sign on? Which month? September, October, something like that, sir. You're trying to tell me that you didn't aim a single blow at Mr. Clark. That, in fact, he attacked you. Yes, sir. Yeah, he was staggering around in this confined space. He was half blind, your words. So he couldn't see properly. Yet he attacked you. He didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know. He was dying. Mm. So you left your fingerprints on the doorstop? That hasn't been proved yet. He's admitted he handled it. And you closed the door? Yes. So your fingerprints are on that too. <laughs> then you ran downstairs. And this is the bit I don't understand. You took off your overalls, you stuffed them down to the bottom of a dustbin, and without telling anyone or locking up, you went home, locked the door, and went to bed. Yes, sir. Where well, you thought up this story of a man in a blue hat. Sit up, lad, I'm talking to you. Let's try again. What happened to your unemployment card? I don't know. I had it yesterday. Where do you think you might have lost it? Well, I thought you took it from me when you brought me in here. There's the stuff we got from you. It's not there, is it? No, I suppose not. Don't just suppose. It's not, is it? No, sir. When did you last notice it in your pocket? That was the hat. How do you know? I remember the feather and the black ribbon. Which pub was it? Uh, Royal Postal on corner of Sentinel Street, in the Gents. Any more statements in? Uh, you mean you from the October lot? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Four. Uh, now, this public... Uh, no, sir. Know? He doesn't remember anybody wearing the hat. Ask him again. All right, sir. Did you have a drink last night? What? Did you go anywhere for a drink last night? Coffee bar, pub? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. You know a pub called the Royal Post Horn? Yes, sir. Dropped in there for a drink last night, didn't you? No, sir. That's yours. No. What size you take? I don't know. I don't wear hats. Get it to the lab. You wrote this last letter to Mr Buckingham five weeks ago, right? Yeah. Ever seen a bulldog clip like that before? No, I told you. You've got your lot coming means you're going to get killed, doesn't it? No, it don't. It's a threat to kill, isn't it? No, no I didn't Sit kill. Sit down. What happened to your labour exchange card? I don't know. 
But whether you killed him or not, you said you were going to kill him, didn't you? I was asked to write that letter. I was asked. Oh? Oh, uh, more door-to-door, sir. Right. Bring in a man called Arthur Simons. Mm -hmm. Runs an illegal anti-immigrant organisation called Anti-Black Action. Right. Clerks are just blowing the gaff on him. Bring him in. Right, sir. Wait a minute. Mm. What's this? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, posse interviewed by D.C. Stevens. Lives in Sentinel Street. Yes, sir. Several pubs got a bit drunk out of work since October last year. Stevens still with us, uh, No, sir. He's moved on to the next one on the list. But this is only 20 doors away from the club. It's closer than Boone. Yes, I know, sir. Get a I car, a... quick. Yes, fine, sir. I want Arthur Simons here when I get back. Right, give it off, Right. Simon. Looks as if we might be onto something. Uh, yes. Uh, we're police officers. May we come in? Well, there was a detective. Uh, we're from New Scotland, yeah. Oh, yes. Where is your husband? Oh, he went out. When? Well, as soon as the detective left. Jo George seemed to be, well, I don't know, sort of upset. Upset? Yes. Because of the detective's visit? Well, I suppose so. Where did he go? Oh, he didn't say. Any idea at all where he might be? No, he just didn't say. Now, the detective probably told you that we're looking into the death of a man at the theatre club down the road here. Oh, yes, yeah. He made a statement. They wanted to know where he was yesterday. Yes, well, I want to see him again because I want to ask him some more questions. That's his coat. Uh, yes. Was he wearing it yesterday? Uh, yes, he, he was, yes. Does he wear a hat? Yes. Oh, where is it? Well, he said he lost it. Where did he lose it? Look, what does Just answer the mean? question, it... where did he lose it? Well, he couldn't remember. He, he said that he'd had a bit to drink. He went to several pubs. Did he mention any of them to you? Uh, no. Did he go to the local? Uh, yes, I think he did. Oh, but he's not a drinking man. In fact, this is the first time that he, he ever... Are, are you saying... This your husband's unemployment card? Well, yes, yes, but what... Oh, my God. Sit down, please. He oh. went to the Labour Exchange yesterday. Yes. Did he draw his dole money? Yes. How much? Uh, ten pounds and eighty pence. Did he give it to you when he came in last night? No, he gave me twenty. How much? Twenty pounds. Where did he get that much from? Well, he said he'd had a win, a, a win on a horse, he said. He... Is he a betting man? No, not usually. He... Where is this money? Well, I took it in to pay the man this morning, you see. You see, they came yesterday to take the fridge away and George said that he'd find the money, so they gave him till today and I took it in. Oh, my God, no. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? We've uh, located him. A man named Posse has been admitted to Queen Caroline Hospital. Both were slashed. Right, get back to the car. I'll be right with you. Stay with her, settle her down a bit, then come along to Queen Caroline's. He's tried to do himself in. Oh, please, sit down, Mrs. Possum. I don't know what's going on. I mean, I mean, one minute it's all normal, then we've got the police. Look, what's happened? Well, we don't know properly yet. No, I, mean, I mean, isn't anybody going to tell me what this, all, this is all about? I, I mean, you're, you're going on as if George killed that man. I mean, is that what you're trying to say? We're just asking questions at the moment, Mrs. Possum. Yeah, it's been hard for you, has it, your husband out of work? Hard? We haven't known where to turn. And, and then they started taking our stuff away, all our good furniture, I mean. You don't think we like living here, do you? No. No. We spent more than 20 years with that firm, and then suddenly there was a note on his desk. Look, owing to economies, we are forced to make the company regrets that... He started as a filing clerk when we got married. And where did he work? Cliff Engineering, round the corner, in the office. Fifteen years he worked at that desk waiting to be promoted. Fifteen years. Then he got what's called a section leader, head of his section. 
And then there were factories closing down and half the office was sacked. He must have been pretty desperate. He was, yes. Are you Chief Superintendent Kingdom? Yes. Uh, well, I'm afraid you're going to have to wait. He's just had a transfusion. Going to be all right? Yes, I think so. He's lost a lot of blood, of course, but I think we can put that back all right. Do you mind waiting for a minute? No, of course not. Oh, how is she? She'll be all right. What about him? He'll live. So, we were all wrong. It was neither Boone nor Perks. No, I wasn't wrong. I said it was a plain snatch all along. Nothing to do with race at all. Do you still think I'm prejudiced? It's what you said about me that interests me more. No, what was that? You said that I was bending over backwards to prove I wasn't prejudiced. I said some people. Well, that means me. I read a bit of Buckingham's script that we took away. Now, he's got a theory that everyone's prejudiced somewhere or other, whether they like it or not. Country against country, colour against colour, race against race, fat against thin, you name it. Yes? Well, if he's right, and I think he is, that means you and me. When are we going to admit it? Not me. I'll admit it. It's all right if we know about it. We can fight it, control it, eliminate it, if we know about it. But you? Me? I just don't like criminals. Oh, the contempt you showed for Boone was normal, was it? You know, you have a whole vocabulary of insulting looks and remarks reserved for people with a black skin that does you no credit. That's the first I've heard of it. I won't be the last, I promise you. You accused me of partiality. Well, I'm going to round up that gang of white maniacs. There'll be charges under the Race Relations Act when we get back. That's my partiality. If it came about because I was prejudiced, good. Right, you can see him now, just for a minute. Thank you, Doctor. Mr. Posse? Mr. Posse? Can you hear me? We're police officers. Now, a man was killed last night in the Third World Theatre Club in Sentinel Street. That's your street, Mr. Posse. Will you tell us what you know about it? Stupid. Isn't it stupid? I mean, it's our furniture. They can't take that back. They can't take the bed back. Not by law, they can't. The fridge. Yeah. Well, I get work. You just see. Tomorrow oh, I'll Mr. get. Mr. Posse. Well, can you hear me? I'm a police officer. Call the police. Tell them I. I call them. Tell them. That man didn't do it. Do what? Kill the black man. What black man? That theatre club. Who did it? I did. I didn't mean to. Stupid, isn't it? Isn't that stupid? Money. The fridge. The money for the fridge. Thank the Lord. I am glad. Yes, well, I'm sorry we caused you this inconvenience, Mr. Boom. It's a pity you didn't come to us in the first place. Better to have told us about it, you know. Thank you, sir. Right, Mr. Boom, if you go with this officer, he'll return your personal effects and clothes. Thank you, Mr. Daniels, for all your help. Thank you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Well, how did I do then? Well, it's easy enough to be nice and polite to someone when you want them to be a prosecution witness, isn't it? How old are you? Twenty. You're going to have another visit from the probation officer. She's going to send me a report. It's going to go something like this. Andrew Perks comes from a broken home. He was brought up in an atmosphere of hatred and brutality. His behaviour towards the immigrant community is a reflection of his own 
impotence and inferiority, and I'm going to say, so what? Hi, Mr. Buckingham. You'll be glad to know that a man not of colour will be charged with the murder of Charles Clark. Mr. Boone has been released. I see. Well, uh, can I have my script back, please? Yes, certainly. There we are. What's going to happen to the theatre? I don't know. We've closed down. Well, I don't claim to be any judge, but that seems to be pretty good to me. Why don't you try again? I might do that. On the other hand, it might be too late, huh? Oh, no, sir. It's never too late. Arthur Simons, anti-black action. I want a word with you. <laughs> 